There we go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be here, I think, for my sixth conference. Um, uh, it's good to see all the familiar faces again, and, um, and every year I just, I don't know how many people I don't know in the room, but for any of those I don't know, my name is Rhys Griffiths, and I am Dear Industry New Zealand's Velvet Marketing Services Manager. After feedback from previous conferences, uh, I thought we'd approach the Velvet session a little bit differently than we have in the past. So we, we've sp um, split it up into sort of two key sections, oh, two key sections, uh, with the first one being a presentation given by uh, Professor Fuhi Young, the chairman, executive chairman of the Chinese Deer Farmers Association. We're very privileged that he's come all the way out to New Zealand and his drive to try and create more collaboration between the two industries. Between New Zealand and China, we would estimate that we both produce around about two-thirds of the world's um, production, actually probably a little bit more than that. China is a market of particular interest to us, but we need to understand or overcome some of the regulatory hurdles within this market. However, some farmers in China are concerned about the impact of New Zealand velvet going into that market and seek more protect protection. As their leader, uh, Yang Fu He, is adamant that the best way forward is cooperation. To cooperate rather than to compete can truly lead to a win-win situation. He will present on the Chinese deer industry, its issues, the potential for collaboration, and for New Zealand to overcome and resolve some of the perceived regulatory issues. The second part will be my presentation. It is a bit of a state of the nation. And while I hear a lot of people out there saying, Velvet seems like it's going well, there are risks within our industry. And now we need to be even more vigilant than ever to make sure that we keep, keep things going. This will lead nicely into the second part of the, uh, of the session, a 15 minute, time allowing, uh, panel session, which will be moderated, kindly moderated by Collier, Collier Isaacs. The panel will include three exporters who represent, or combined, they represent 75% of, uh, of New Zealand velvet exports. And the three have quite different business models in the way they operate, from an independent model to a cooperative to a corporate model, and most of these guys will be well known to you in the industry. All three are close to our markets, and the market is within that industry. But I would now like to welcome Professor Yang Fu He uh, up to the stage. He is supported here with his wife, Professor Gao, who is a lead nutrition, uh, nutritionist around deer nutrition uh, in the Chinese deer industry as well. Professor Yang Fu He will be supported by, uh, by someone that quite a few of you guys will know, uh, Dr. Chun Yi Lee. Dr. Lee worked for Ag Research for 23 years. And I see Dr. Lee as being the glue that, that is bringing our two industries closer together. So please welcome up uh, Yang Fu He. Hello, hello. If you cannot hear me, tell me. Because only my voice you can understand, okay? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, um, congratulations to this uh, dear annual meeting and also really appreciate the invitation and to be honored to give this talk. Uh, the main theme of his talk is about uh, um, the deer, mainly farmed for wild wheat, and how to collaborate with the NZ Deer Farmer Association. Uh, 主题是，一个是中国的养路业的情况，给大家介绍；再就是西南养路业和中国养路业怎么着共同发展。哎，mainly his talk include five items as you can see, and and he will briefly go through the Chinese deer farmer um deer farming status, and then discuss how what is the best way for the two industries to get together to work together. 中国鹿的一共是有十六种，但是呢，真正人工养殖的有梅花鹿、有马鹿、有水鹿、有白唇鹿、驯鹿。Uh, 
according to the uh, pop literature, China has uh, around 60, 16, mm -hmm. one six uh, deer species, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, domesticated or farmed only uh, mm -hmm. a few species like sick deer, wolf deer, reindeer, samba, wet leopard, and roe deer. Because the main purpose, as you probably know, Chinese farming deer mainly for velvet, and quite different from New Zealand because NZ deer farm farmers mainly produce venison. But the Chinese farming deer can be used for velvet. Uh, according to the Chinese pharmacopoeia, um, only Chinese sick deer and warp tea has a medicinal value. Uh, that's, uh, you know, only these two deer species, well, with, from these two deer species are listed in the pharmacopoeia. The other corner is the sick deer, and this corner is wapiti. And samba in the middle, and white leopard in that lower corner. In the middle, lower middle is reindeer. We also farm musk deer. That's a drying warp tea, well wet, and the other part is a sick deer. This is the size of the population of herds of farmed deer. The blue one is a sick and the red is a warp tea. Well weight price, and as you can see, the blue is sick and red is wapiti. Uh, as I said, there's a you know, significant trend. You can see a uh, sick deer well, which is significantly higher in price than Wapiti uh, well. Particularly in recent uh, 10 years. This is a deer population farmed. Um, the upper one is the sick and the lower one is wapiti. So you can see the trend is decreasing. This is a deer population farmed. The upper one Sick deer mainly farmed in northeast of China accounts for 65 percent. Malu na zhuo fen bu dai Xinjiang, Nei Mongu, He Liaoning, Hei Longjiang de. Wapiti mainly farmed in Xinjiang and uh, in the Mongolia. 其他的数量就比较少了，是。Rest of the species are. Not uh, significant. Uh, over the years, uh, Chinese uh, deer farmers has been um, breed sick deer, so they have uh, one local sick deer species uh, or breed, and uh, seven. Artificial breeze. Has uh, over 400 years history. Malu, this number is also quite small, but its breeding time is shorter. 
uh, in terms of poverty, the farming history is much shorter than sick deer. There are three uh, breeds in Wapiti. Artificially selected. Uh, there are three um, uh, Wapiti breeds name. Uh, because of time constraints, so he wants to skip this slice of wood. Yeah. Yeah. Now he wants to talk something about uh, uh, well weight in the traditional Chinese medicine. Because Probably you already know why well, it has uh, quite some uh, medicinal values or pharmacological effects or efficacy. And uh, but in China, we think mainly based on the traditional Chinese medicine theory. This is the earliest. It's called Shen Shen Nongshi. 在中国的五千年以前的神农氏,神农尝本草,实际是中国的中医药的起源,是这个是老祖先。This is the first person who started to taste uh, Chinese herbal medicine um, called Yan Di. This is another one very famous in China. Bian Chue. This is from <laughs> Professor Yang's hometown. This is a doctor Another famous doctor called Hua Tuo, um, from the dynasty of three kingdoms. This is Li Shizhen. Probably most people know this guy because we call him ancestor or founder of traditional Chinese medicine called Li Shizhen. They, this guy is also famous, but no photos because no cameras were invented during that period. Or drawing. Jin的研究呢，也对这些陆产品呢的综合利用也搞了好多研究。呃，但是呢，这些都是以基于中国的中医药的这个传统医学。Recent years, uh, quite a lot of studies were carried out uh, uh, for, uh, to evaluate uh, well with uh, effects, but uh, mainly based on the traditional Chinese medicine theory. Hmm.下面我重点呢，说一说这个就是路有关一些就是产业发展中存在的问题。这些问题呢，中国和新西兰可能很多都是共同的。now he wants to discuss some problems encountered during the development of deer industry. Because the As probably most of you, uh, here, you know, well wheat antler has a very special biological features. They actually drop off and regrow every year, and, um, and uh, during the growth phase, they can grow up to two centimeters uh, long, and uh, no comparison uh, other mammalian tissue. Probably 
because of this uh, special, unique, I'd uh, say, uh, biological features, our ancestors thought they must be unique to human health. This is a Chinese word uh, about wild wheat. As you can see, uh, on top is a grass, and uh, then the lower part is ear. Actually, like uh, grass grow from deer ear. Like the because while well, wheat grow like a grass, so actually uh, somebody mentioned the drought, and the drought has actually will infect or affect antler well wheat antler growth. Now, the wheat grow as a traditional medicine, not only in the wood, 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 中国呢，不仅仅是鹿茸，这些副产品在中国的传统医药当中，特别是一些地方的偏方上也有重要的价值。Besides wild wheat, actually we consider every part of the sick deer body actually have a medicinal value.就等于是这个鹿全身都可以利用。So we call sick deer a treasure animal. 实际上，我们这两天讨论大部分是鹿肉和鹿角，其他地方还没有更多的讨论。As uh, he can understand, during these two days, uh, people mainly talk about venison and wild wheat. I hardly mention deer coal products, and he thinks that's actually hold a lot's value. 前一段呢，有人给我要鹿角那个鹿鹿蹄子那个壳，他烧了以后做灰也能要用。uh, not far ago, and somebody asked um, deer hoof uh, from him, and just uh, then burned it to ash to treat some unusual disease. So he thinks uh, deer is uh, also is a valuable animal So he thinks deer is is a valuable animal, both uh, economically and uh, medicinally, medically. 但是呢，这个养鹿业呢，就是在中国养鹿业存在一些问题。这问题呢，就是还不能太展开讲了。这个简单说一下吧。对，just briefly because he he doesn't have time. Yeah.中国养鹿业存在的问题。That's the Chinese deer farm. Ah,大家看一看这些。Deer farming ah encountered the problem. 这是第四个，第四个呢，就是这个养鹿业，我想呢，应该是重点，重点解决的问题，可持续发展一些对策，一些研究的题目。As you can see, this is the strategies he thinks that both industries should adopt. 一些科学问题，一些技术问题。that's a scientific and a technological problems. Uh, he wanted to use rest of the very limited time to talk about the exit of well wheat uh, application and uh, how, the, how the two industries can uh, can actually work together, make the industry you know, to go forward. China is a tradition, uh, traditional deer farming country, and New Zealand is a new uh, deer farming country, and the, in terms of uh, Deer population might be quite similar. Because our Chinese-born wild wheat almost every annual meeting, because like New Zealand, you do have a deer farm uh, annual meeting, and the Chinese does the same thing. And uh, almost each year, the deer farm, Chinese deer farmers would uh, appeal to him because 
he's the number one figure in Chinese deer industry, said we should block New Zealand wild wheat uh, uh, importation because that's actually damaging our industry. He thinks that's actually wrong idea because uh, even if you block uh, uh, New Zealand wild wheat ex uh, importation to China, if you cannot find a real use or application of wild wheat for the you know, human health or something else, you still have a surplus wild wheat. So that's not a good idea to actually block New Zealand wild wheat into China, China, Chinese market. Uh, he thinks the, the best choice or best scenario, we should work together actually scientifically to find what the real medicinal value of the wild wheat. And his idea is if we can find one real application in the medical field, even double the amount of the wild wheat production from the two countries, you simply cannot uh, meet the demand of this uh, use. So he thinks that, that will create a win-win situation if we can work together. He uh, to be able to achieve this goal, he suggests uh, um, uh, the, you know, the top level industry people uh, should actually visit each other, attending each other's conference, and exchange ideas, and exchange experience, and discuss the best way to go forward. Because we two uh, as you can see from the slide, and uh, he thinks uh, Chinese deer farm and uh, deer farming and New Zealand deer farming exist a difference because you guys are mainly for producing venison and we producing wild wheat. So uh, uh, as you can see, the species difference and, uh, and market-wise, basically, we have the market and you guys want to export the New Zealand wild wheat to Chinese market. He thinks uh, the two deer industries uh, have a complementary, uh, is are complementary. That is, New Zealand, the wild wheat, it has a different nature and structure. One is that the wild wheat is derived from the traditional wild wheat. It is over thousands of years of Chinese people. Basically, um, like uh, the farmer copy, Chinese farmer copy, mm -hmm. the general Chinese deer farmers mm -hmm. think or consider a New Zealand wild wheat cannot be simply equal to Chinese wild wheat based on traditional Chinese medicine. Zhong Yi Yao, it has a certain meaning. Based on the based on the pharmacopoeia, uh, even if the same species but uh, farmed or raised in the different place, and the medicinal value will be different. This is why we want to research. It is very complex. So you can see the two examples. I don't want to translate them uh, here because of the time limit. Uh, so uh, he thinks if the traditional Chinese medicine theory is correct or, right or not, actually we should test scientifically if that's true. So, 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 so,
，始终是呢不敢标明是新西兰产的鹿茸，他一直按中国鹿茸的或马鹿茸去卖。哎 ，according to his、uh, knowledge, uh, even if New Zealand wild wheat has shown up or appear in Chinese market for more than twenty years now. But never been、uh, formally labeled NZ made or made in NZ. A、uh, quite different from New Zealand milk or wool or、um, even venison. So you can pro probably proudly label them from NZ. But、uh, according to his knowledge, well, it never been labeled like that. So, 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 So traditional Chinese medicine theory thinks that way, but as a modern people, we must based on the science. So that's why he thinks we should scientifically test or challenge traditional Chinese medicine theory. So this is why we need to develop a common scientific basis. Based on the based on that thought, he thinks we should jointly set up some research or collaborative research project to tackle this problem. I think that New Zealand, this is, its lulong, may be better than China, may be better than China's lulong. A scientific results might show, okay, wild wheat from New Zealand is not as good, but nobody can a guarantee say. New Zealand wild wheat, they not cannot be better or even better than Chinese. Nobody would know unless the scientific results are forthcoming. Because New Zealand this wild wheat's advantage is that it is in very good environment and environmental conditions, and it is based on the cultivation of wild wheat and wild wheat as a main crop. It has also a very good export market and a stable market. 另外呢，还有这个鹿叶这个稳定的这种支撑体系，再就是鹿茸，还有可能在中国销售，因为中国是很大的一个市场。中国鹿茸如果是中国人都需要鹿茸的话，是这点鹿茸也是不多的。哎 ，as you can read the slide, I don't need to translate. New Zealand deer farms has advantages over Chinese. Actually, all these advantages are admired by Chinese deer farmers. And、uh, if you can successfully open Chinese market, as he just pointed out, 1.3 billion people, and that's a huge market. This is what we are proud of. This is our focus in cooperation. I think we should continue to develop these cooperations. These are his preliminary ideas. From which angle we should start to collaborate to tackle these problems? And as you can read, 比如说功能成分，像包括应用的效果，包括加工方法，包括市场的开拓，包括这个饲养和营养，以及这个生产全过程的控制。Basically, from bioactive substances and、uh, medicinal effects, say, processing method and so on, and you can read. Because, uh, China Wildlife Association uh, Chinese Deer Farm Association uh, just established for five years. He is the first chairman for the association. I think I will use one sentence to you. In his last talk, he'd like to give you one sentence shown on the slide. I believe that when the result is out, we won't talk about meat anymore. He thinks when the scientific research results come out, and people will actually spend more time discussing wild wheat, even more than discussing venison. Welcome to visit China. Thank you. Thank you very much. To truly maximise the market potential, we need to understand some of the dynamics that goes goes through. And I really thank、um, uh, Professor Young for giving us、uh, his view when he stands up in front of his、uh, his stakeholders. 
and, and they come through with their concerns. Cheap New Zealand Velvet or New Zealand Velvet coming in, undermining their, their industry, um, let's start blocking them. Professor Young says, no, if we work with them, we can build this market so we can all win. And that, and that type of message, I think, is, is truly special. So I do, I thank you very much for giving that a lot of consideration. I'd like to ask our chairman to come up. We have a small gift uh, for the Chinese Deer Farm Association chairman. The, the gift is actually in keeping uh, with tonight's theme because I didn't think there would be uh, many swan dry uh, sold over in, in China. So, without further ado. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> perhaps if I could just go to the, I could just go to the microphone um, for a second so it could be, uh, it could be recorded. Professor, Professor Young, you've really uh, shown us the, um, the a, a blueprint of the way forward, and I took four key messages, perhaps Chung Yi Lee you might like to interpret. The, the human health characteristics of, of our overall deer product, not just the venison but the co-product and the velvet. The collaboration aspect. and that science is the glue that can bring two countries together and that we have two complementary uh, sectors. So we look forward to exploring ways, uh, some, some joint science, we look forward to exploring ways we can do it. And I'd just like to uh, express a special thanks to Chung Yi Lee as well, he, he represents uh, the future of the relationship between uh, China um, and New Zealand because he has been in New Zealand for 23 years, he has, his, his two children live in New Zealand, he's back in China building the links and, and he is the uh, one of the mechanisms by which uh, people like Professor Young, his wife uh, Professor Go, who's a nutrition expert, um, and ourselves can uh, learn from each other. Thank you. Were there any quick questions at all? Down here. Uh, can someone take a... Can you maybe... Oh, has anyone got a... Yeah, there we go. Tony, Tony Pierce. Is it okay? Yeah. Um, Just speak into it. It should, it should work. Yeah. Um, uh, they had all the byproducts like velvet and everything else from deer, and I'm actually a velvet farmer, but what do they do with the venison? Because the sole purpose of Chinese deer, farming deer is to produce wild wheat. So um, when the deer uh, finish the wild wheat value and become very old, Nobody likes to eat uh, to have venison because nobody can chew them. <laughs> 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 <laughs>